season of our elevation, for those of you visiting for us for the very first time, God said we are in the season of elevation. Okay, so it's a season, a season of, of elevation. elevation. And what God said to us is that he's taking us from one level to another. And when you get to that, when you want to move from, like, you want, when you climb a staircase, when you move from staircase one, two, three, as you go higher, you lose breath, isn't it? But as you get to the top, that is where your destination is. Uh, today, we're going to look at something that is crucial. All right, let's turn our Bibles to Judges, chapters, Judges, chapter 6. The background to this, I'm going to read from verse 11. The background to this story is that Gideon was told by his parents all the great things God has done, how God brought them out of Egypt, how he killed the firstborn, split the Red Sea when they were hungry, he fed them. Then all of a sudden, they've realized that um, their enemies were defeating them. So what he was told and what he is actually witnessing on the ground <laughs> are directly opposite to each other. So angel of the Lord appeared to him. And so let's continue the conversation from there, from verse 11. Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the temporary tree, which was in offer, which belongs to Josh the Abyssad, while his son Gideon trashed which in a wine press, in order to hide from the Midianites. The angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. Gideon said to him, O oh Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And when, where are all his miracles which our fathers told us about, saying, did, did not the Lord bring us out of Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Then the Lord turned to him and said, Go in this mind of yours, and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? So he said to him, O oh Lord, how can I save Israel? Indeed, my clan is the least in Manasseh. And I'm the least in my father's house. And the Lord said to him, Surely I will be with you, and you shall defeat the Midianites as one man. Let's go to Exodus chapter 3. Again, we, this is also about Moses, the background to this is Moses was born as a Jew and was born in Egypt. And uh, they decided to kill all the firstborn of the Jews. And, and God divinely saved him. And he ended up in the house of the, the king, like the, now like yeah, the queen. And he was a Hebrew, and he was being raised as the prince of Egypt. So what he was seeing from the outside was not, but inside of him, he knows he's not an Egyptian. But he was being treated like the prince. Everything at his disposal, all the opulence of Egypt at the time. And all, I mean, he just said, flip his fingers, everything is done. But within him, there's that conflict of, that is not me. And so we, we all went, if you, if you were like me, do you go to Sunday school? Then you go back and read the story. Uh, and then he, got, he, he saw two Egyptians, uh, Israelis uh, fighting. He tried to separate them. And, uh, he, and then the, the Egyptians were trying to uh, molest the Israelites. He killed them, and he went away for 40 years. Uh, and God appeared to him. And this is a conversation that took place. Let's read from verse 11. But Moses said to God, so God told him, I'm, I'm sending you back to uh, Israel, the Egypt, to bring my people out. Who am I? that I should go to Pharaoh, that I, will, I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt. So he said, I will certainly be with you, and this shall be a sign to you that I have sent you. When you have brought the people of Egypt out, you shall serve God 
on this model. Moses said to you, indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, the God of your fathers have sent you. They said to, and they said to me, what, sh what is his name? What should I say to them? And Moses said to, and, and God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said that you shall say to the children of Israel, I am have sent you. And we further realized that Moses was complaining that, listen, I can't, he cannot talk. Uh, it's a man of a slow speech. And God said, I'll give you Aaron. All right. All of us, all of us are not impressed with something about our lives. Where you were born, your race, something about us makes us feel inadequate. And that inadequacy generates an emotion inside of us. That emotion, if handled properly, can be channeled to do something useful. If not, it becomes a self-defeating mechanism. Just like Gideon. He, God is calling you a mighty person, but he is not impressed. And Moses, on the other hand, he's also had a conflict inside. That emotion is what we call insecurity. So today we are going to look at dealing with insecurity. If we are going to maintain ourselves at elevated position and get to a level where God wants, one of the things all of us have to deal with is insecurity. And every one of us here feels insecure. Okay. Let's look at the meaning of insecurity. American Psychological Society defines insecurity this way. It's, 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 it's best when I use a term that I'm comfortable with. It's a, it's a feeling. So that means it's not necessarily real. The emotion that is generated when we feel inadequate or we feel like I'm not good enough or we feel like, ah, this thing is too much for me. I cannot face these people. That's why sometimes you find out that you're able to talk to your friends and you are comfortable. You meet certain people and then your whole speech turns upside down. Why? Because of the insecurity that's taking grip of you. Because it's that feeling of inadequacy. Lack of self-confidence. And inability to cope. Accompanied by general uncertainty and anxiety about one's goal, abilities, or relationships with others. So... Insecurity is a feeling. It's not the truth. It's based on a fact, but it's not. And most of the time, insecurity stems from our foundation in life, very child, childhood. Uh, those of you who've done uh, 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 social work, for example, you've done something on attachment theory. You know, you have to have attachment. When you have attachment, you have basis. And most of us do not have the attachment properly done. And so, because of and, uh, the real attachment is not with our parents, our, our earthly parent is good, but the real attachment with it's God. When you don't have that attachment with God, you have insecurity. If you don't have attachment with our parents, we may have that. I, 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 I'll tell my life story how I, I was very insecure from my childhood. Can you believe I was in a class? I didn't even know my classmates, the name of some classmates. I just didn't even know them. Because me, my, my motive is walk to the classroom and walk out. Because I, feel, I felt inadequate. I lack confidence. Born in a cocoa tree, treated like a prince, sent back to the cocoa tree. <laughs> and then you come back to the city. And then you realize that your life is different. The truth about insecurity is this. It's a signal from our brain. It's a message from our brain telling us. So it's, that, it's like an inner voice. And then it's normally reacting to an outside influence. So for example, <laughs> I look in the mirror today. I can look in that mirror, then I said, 
hey, look at this, my nose. This nose is, was nice. Now look at how your, my nose has become flat. Now, it's my brain telling me, and I'm reacting to what I'm seeing. Is that right? All of a sudden, you'll be talking to people, then you're covering your nose. And then somebody told me my mouth is big. Yeah, but that's why I can talk. And, but but what, you, what I am seeing, it's that, 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 that brain is telling you something. It may be true, but it may, it may be, sorry, it may be the fact, but it may not be the truth. If God makes everything beautiful, then why shouldn't I be impressed about myself? David said, I'm wonderful and fearfully made. God specifically formed me. I'm unique. That's why I, 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 when I was a kid, I never liked myself. Because he thought my, my ears were big. That's why I can hear news from far away. I remember that I was walking on the street. A lady literally stopped and said, what a handsome boy. I thought he was, she was making a mockery out of me. I ran back to the house. Why? I was, I, this message that my brain sent to me, have now internalized it and I believed it. That is how the devil makes us feel insecure. I know we have to hurry up and I want to eat some watch here. So, insecurity is mostly that inner voice. It's a critic voice. Just like Gideon, the, 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 the angel is saying, you mighty man of valor. And he said, oh my goodness, where did you sleep last night? That is not me. You can't, where, where is God if God is with me? Where are all the miracles? When I'm telling you, you can do everything God wants you to do. You can achieve everything in life if only you believe in yourself. And the God who made you, there is nothing impossible. Whoever told you, you cannot make it, you are not good enough, slept on the right, wrong side of the bed. They did not know you. They did not form you. It is their opinion. And that becomes a critic voice, the external forces that tells us that you are not able to do it. But here God is telling you, I have made you, you can do all things to Christ. He said, you receive everything provided you can think about it. And then you keep telling yourself, I can't make it. And many of us, the reason why we are, we are where we are is just because we've listened to that inner critical voice for so long. And mostly it does on the negative, not on the positives of lives. The things that will progress will cause you to move from one level to another. That is not what it dwells on. What it dwells on are the very things that will drag you down. And that's why sometimes in a class discussion, you are really good. But when it comes to examination, you can't do anything. Why? That inner critic voice, you are good, you are not good enough, comes in. Some of you, you are the loudest in your house. But as soon as you come out of the house, you are like me, Mumu. Why? That small critical voice is telling you, you are not good. So it suppresses you. Some of the things we do, we are not aware of. The reason why I'm telling you this is this. Listen to this. If you don't li haven't heard anything at all, listen to this. The things you are aware of, you can manage. Is that right? But the things you are not aware of manages you. And we are told 20, only 20% of the things that we do are what we are aware of. 80% we are not aware of. But it controls us. Our actions and behavior controls us. It's like the iceberg. That is why it's good to put the word of God inside of us so much that when you wake up, the word of God controls you. You have no control. That is why we cannot afford not to read the word of God. It is not just a, a gimmick, but God, the more you put in, the more it's going to come. It's a repository. So it goes in and you draw it out as and when you need it. Otherwise, any, any external voice, which is of the, mostly of the devil, will, uh, will come and tell you you are good, not enough. 
Do you know that this critical voice can be so loud you cannot do anything? Yeah? I, I, used to be, I, I used to be scared of height. <laughs> so when a plane is taking off, la, 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 you see this man close his eyes, I'll be praying tongues. I'm going on the ride. Then one day he just forget to me. I said, ah, what is this about? How many times have planes taken off and fallen? And inside you trust God that will carry you. So why are you? And I was since then, now I look down. I watch all the buildings, all the beds flying. It's even better when the bed is coming towards the engine. You can, you can see it. But as a result, and how did I know? I've, how did that start? It started when I fell off a mango tree when I was young. And because of that, the ability went as long as I go a bit higher, I become afraid. But what changed me? My, the, the, uh, the, what changed me was when I realized that I'm a child of God and God is not going to let me fail. That plane is not going to come down because of me. Because I am in it. When I join the car, the car will not have an accident because I am in it. Because he carries me. And since then, I'm not scared of height. Why? Because I re- had to reprogram my mind. You see, shortcoming, our insecurity makers focus on shortcomings rather than our God who gives us the strength. So what insecurity does is shift the focus away from God and put it on you. Put it on, you see, our, we can do nothing by ourselves. You know why? See, when I come here today, the message you are going to hear is not me preaching it. Jesus said, I, wherever two or three are gathered in my name. So whatever miracle, whatever takes place, it's Jesus who does it. So, but when, when you take the thing, when you put it upon yourself, that I am the one going to do it. I'm not saying that you, you want, it's just like a, the, uh, the, the voice of, the voice that you're hearing, it's not from, the, it's through the mic, but it's not the mic. Is that right? We are just a vessel. So we have to apply to the highest ability, but what comes through us is God who does everything. Who gave you life today? Who gave you bread? Sister Paul, within a month, we lost two of our friends, um, mates. We did a month. Are we any special? Maybe not. But it's just God's grace. So it, we, when, when, when we look at God, is that he's the one that sustains us. He's the one that keeps us. I'm not scared of anything. Look, there were times that I, 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 I used to, not all of you, I used to work as a consultant. And I'm faced with a problem. And I'll just go and pray. When an idea just come in, I go and implement They say, ah, you are truly a gifted African. And everybody thought that this guy was brilliant. But I know that my, for without a shadow of that, it is not my intelligence, but it's the one that is within, inside of me. So I don't depend on my own ability. So what the devil does is takes a focus away from you, from, from God, and put it on you. And you think that you are you. But we are not of ourselves. Paul said, for me to live is Christ. I die daily. So it is no longer me. So when I get out of bed, that is why when you get up, I say, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Good morning. Because I know that once I have breath, then he's giving me the strength to go through. You see, the problem with insecurity is this. Many of us think that insecurity is people who are only timid. Is that right? But that is not. Insecurity can make you come out as a very proud person because what is you are feeling inside, you try to cover it up. And so what, what you pro- project outside is different. So you see people who normally are critical of others, very critical of others, are very insecure people. So what they are doing is that they are projecting their insecurity onto somebody else. So what they are saying does not match what is inside. Let me say this with no apologies. Don't hang around people who feed your insecurity. They are destroying you. They may appear they are helping you, but they are destroying you. And we have to let the Holy Spirit minister to you and know that 
what the person is saying is not helping me. It doesn't love me necessarily. It's feeding their own insecurity and they're making you a, a, a victim. The part of us that we, we are ashamed of, we cover, isn't it? That's nature. I'm not sure I'll finish, but do I care? No. You've got the gist already, is that right? I think I've said that again, repetition. Insecurity makes us look at ourselves and not make God the ultimate owner of our lives. Our life does not belong to him. Each and every one of us here will give account of God when we die. So whatever you have today, every single second of your life, you give account of. So God is not, God is not impressed with what we come and do here. No. This is just for the camera. What God is really impressed with is what is inside our heart. Why am I doing this? Is this out of genuineness or performance? Is it out of uh, 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 obedience or I want to flow? No. Moses knew who he was. The conflict was not because he didn't know who he was. He knew he was a Jew. He, he was treated as a, a prince of Egypt, but he had to leave that place because he knew who he was. He realized that his life is not in the palace. His life is to serve a living God of the Hebrew. Be careful when God promotes you. Don't hit your chest like we say in Ghana. So this is literal translation. I've made this by myself. You can't. Where you are today is the result of where God has decided to place you. You can either walk into it and enjoy the benefits or stay outside and let the enemy take things. But you can think you have arrived. And that is because of our insecurity, these people think I cannot make it, I've made it. I remember one of my brothers think that I, 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 because, let me tell you a story about this black, intelligent, and gifted African. Well, I used to say handsome, but now he's taking over that title. So, I was two and a half years when my father died. So my big brother took me up. Took me out from the village. My father was so good, he had four wives at the same time. So he lived, we, only, we were the only poor in his village because that we, we are more cocoa trees. So my, but my brother took, picked me up when he finished university, and I didn't even know that he wasn't my father, but he treated me like a prince. My, my kids started there, he told you he 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 the story the other day. And then he had to go to Canada to do his masters. So I had to go back to the village. It is like moving from Buckingham Palace to Somania. <laughs> and I was there for three years. It was the most horrible time, moving from electricity to <laughs> glanting and and so on. And, 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 and because I've, I've lived for a while, I didn't even know Peter Latrine, what it is. I couldn't go. So it was the most horrible time. By the time he came back from me after the third year, I'd been reduced to a very insecure. Then we moved back into the capital of Ghana. And then those days, they don't have respect for where I come from. They're my tribe. But we are the best too. And my, when I came back, I couldn't speak English. I couldn't speak the language, God. I couldn't speak any other apart from God's language. <laughs> so I walk into a class. Anyway. <laughs> it's quite, uh, I walk into a class. 
they were teasing me. And so all of a sudden, this bubbly, running boy became sad. I didn't want to go back to school. And I was sad. I became a very insecure person. Till one day, my performance dropped. I was the first. Now I'm almost middle. So my brothers look at it and one day they call me and say, look at me. Look in the mirror. You are the most handsome, intelligent, and gifted African. All the people who are bullying you, this is because they envy you. And it's true too. When I go to school, when I go to these small girls, they bring me, I never bought anything. <laughs> when I went to secondary school, never take provisions. So but how did I get insecure? Because of that external void. And then inside of me, I believed their story. So I became timid. And what did I do? To be able to move forward, I have to take something extra. Let your mind remain here. <laughs> so I can walk and see nobody, see, see no evil. But then I regained my confidence when I met the Lord. Went around secondary school, I was preaching, was ready to marry. Seven days to the time. Ay, 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 ay. This lady left me because <laughs> she realized that she's caused the boundary. And see, those of us who were in Central those days, we're talking about it was one of the biggest churches in Ghana. And I was being introduced. So we had first service, second service. And all the pastors were making so much noise. And I was a leader. How do you explain that <laughs> you are a leader going to secondary school, villages, planting churches, and all of a sudden the woman that you are going to marry, how do you know that she was like this? I couldn't go back to church. So I went to another church. When I got there, my best friend's uh, mother, uh, uh, sister, saw me. And she said, medical doctor. When she saw me, she started crying, oh, look at me. I said, oh, Lord, me, forget church. So I didn't go to church for three months. My sister used to support me. She came and I'm come to the office and chill out. But then one day, I was reading the Bible. And I read Gideon's story. Then I realized I'm the sent one. Do you know Gideon means cut out? Gideon, the word Gideon. So I said, I'm a cut out person to save people. And I'm not going to allow the enemy. So right, right now, here I am. I'm a, uh, look, at that, so I went back to church. And as I went back to church, what were you doing? I was doing, those days, the church I was in, we, the area the leaders, I was not married. I was the only one. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. I wasn't married. Yet I was doing naming. I was doing engagement, uh, traditional marriages. We bless them. The pastors don't do it. I was doing all of that, and I wasn't married. And they'll be, oh, when is our wives coming? So I said, don't worry. So what did I do? <clears throat> I decided something. I said, I'm going to confront my insecurity. Because that has become another insecurity. So what did I do? I said, the area we had couples retreat. And everybody was like, ah. And through that, those who husbands, especially, were not saved, got saved. And I pumped in so much into couples meeting. I pumped in so much into, and it became very popular. Never once looked down. And all of a sudden, I don't know where the confidence came from. Oh my God. All of, okay, well, I'm going to pray. I don't know where the confidence came from. But when I attached myself, I said, I'm going to serve God. Like, name Kafi means what? To praise God. It means Judah. Ju uh, Jude. Means Judith. So I'm going to live my life to praise God. You know what? One day there's a place called Circle. My driver stopped. I said, I like one thing. <laughs> Those of you know me, I like something called Coliko. You know, so a fried yam and, uh, and, and fried fish. So I was going to buy this thing, and then somebody was pointing at, I, I, it wasn't even me, but I just saw somebody pointing at me. I ran. 
and enter into the category this person is talking, is referring to me. That is insecurity. It makes you run away from where you were hungry to get to something. Insecurity sometimes. So, the, so, there are some of us that we have become like a cat. No, 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 no. no. You are, it's a defensive mechanism. That is how you protect yourself. So, there are some things I do that somebody would think that I am not, I am insensitive. No, I've been there. If somebody is trying to, if, the, <laughs> are, you getting some, are you getting something out of this so far? Our insecurity changes our perception about our life. You are good. God has made you. You are unique. You have the retina of your, your eye is, is unique. Nobody has that. Right? Your thumbprint is, is, is unique. The signal of your voice is really unique. God has made several things unique. Your DNA is unique. There are so many things about you that is unique, and that is what makes you different. So if the person doesn't like you, it's your problem. Amen. But, again, let me keep balance. Balance the key to life. That doesn't mean when they point a blind spot to you. I cannot see what is behind me, right? So when somebody says a mistake, like I always said, no matter how much somebody criticizes you, at least 25% of it might be true. Or read that 25%, you'll be 100% better. Is that right? So they may point, but you filter that through the word of God. God has made you who you are. Boy, I have five minutes. Naturally, we agree. Okay, let me, I'm going to rush through this, okay? Naturally, we aggravate towards reward and run away from pain. That's nature. Huh? If they have, you have a pain and you have reward, which one will you go to? But anything that causes pain within us, we run away from it. So one of the times, the things that are challenging, making us feel like we cannot make it, you are good for nothing, we run away from it. But the truth is to confront that fear in the name of the Lord, because God has given you power to do that. Identify your value, your principles, and character in Christ will ensure you enjoy an elevated life. Well, I have values in Christ. I have principles. The Bible is full of principles. Whoever applies it, it works for them. It doesn't matter whether it's a Buddhist or whatever. No, 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 no. The principles, the same principles work everywhere you go. The values there, when you apply them, works for you. Japan, they apply integrity, hard work, and positive mental attitude. It works. They work 16 hours. Statutory is 14. Is it 12 or 14? 12. 12. But compulsory, four, four. <laughs> we were eight hours and we are crying. How? Because, and they don't steal. We have an ungodly, we have countries like Switzerland. They, they leave the things open. They do that in my country that everybody go, 80% of the people go to church. You won't see anything left. <laughs> because they know who they are. The values we have in Christ. Let's begin to show it off. Is that right? <laughs> we are all vessels that God used to demonstrate his glory. The focus is not on us. The focus is not on us. Okay, let me see. How do we get this? In Daniel chapter 11. How, I'm just going to do this in closing. Two minutes, I'm done. Ah. Are you, can you find Daniel in your Bible? Yes. Oh, come on. Daniel 11. I was going to quote it. 32. We all know it, actually. It's a popular scripture. If you've been to, where are we? Okay, it says that. Those who, <clears throat> those, who, those who do wickedly against the covenant shall corrupt with flattery. But the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. Okay, I'm, I'm dwelling on the big part. It's when you know your God. Jesus said in John uh, 15 verse 5, he said, without me you can do nothing. We can do nothing by ourselves. So when we know God, you have a relationship with God. 
you have an attachment with God. It becomes your base. It be your secure base is in God. It's in Christ. And that's why you become a man or woman of who is not insecure. When they throw challenges at you, you overcome it. Let them give you names and titles. That does not make you who you are. That does not define you. What defines you is what God said to you, said about you before you were born. He said, you are my chosen child. I've chosen you to do great exploits. You, have, you can go places. You were, people said you couldn't go. Why? Because you are no longer insecure. Because you have a secure base. When they said you cannot do it, he said you hit your chest and said, I can do it because God God is with me. But you have to get to know God intimately. One way. Is, you can come to church all your life and still not know God. It's having an encounter with the Father. And that, I, I can talk to you about it, but it's something you have to experience it. I told you, I think you could uh, yesterday, how I said, Lord, let me experience your love. And when God entered into that room, I felt the love of God so much, and I was just crying. I felt like a warm embrace of the Father. You never know how it feels like when you see, you feel like you've lost everything. The day I got to know that my brother was not my father, I felt deceived. I did not know God. So what did I do? <laughs> Went to his house. We had a house. At that time, we had a house. We had layers of this thing. We have drinks of layers of drink. Pick up that drink. I drank it. When, I, when they drank, when, they, when, when the intoxication went, the problem was still there. But when I met the Lord, I felt that warm embrace of the Father. It changed me forever. It didn't change the relationship between us. We actually love each other more. Because I, I actually appreciated how he sacrificed his life for me. And he was protecting me. But the love of the Father is better. You may have gone through all the disappointment, but God is here to do something different with you. Do you know him? Do you want to know him to change your life? It doesn't take much. All you need to do is just say, Father, come into my heart. Forgive me for all the things I've done. I want to live. Our strength and ability to overcome insecurity in life starts with knowing God.